Fellow Bugandans, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to this show. For me, I call it the Uganda human rights, the Uganda struggle for freedom, the Uganda independence talk show. You are welcome to another presentation. From me, from me Alex Chugund, I am the human rights activist for the people of Uganda. Because Uganda as the people, we are under human rights abuse by the government of Uganda. I am here once again, ladies and gentlemen, to deliver to you a wonderful presentation today. I want to welcome all the viewers who watch me around the globe from the provinces of Singo to Koch, from Chadondo to Budu province in Uganda and all other places around Uganda. If you are watching me for the first time, this is Buganda Human Rights Talk Show. This is Uganda Struggle for Freedom Talk Show. In this platform, we speak the truth and nothing but the truth. We make sure that we hold those in leadership into account. You might ask yourself, by the way, Happy New Year to those that managed to, to celebrate, to pass through 2021. But here in Uganda, we don't know which is a new year and which is the old year. We can't differentiate the two because in Uganda, every day we are under surviving. Museven and his government with his opposition leadership, they have put us into the position that we only survive in Uganda. In Uganda, there is genocide going on. Museveni's government with his opposition leadership, they are systematically killing the Uganda people to ensure that they eradicate the people of Uganda. So, you might ask me, what is Uganda? Where is Uganda? I'm here to, I would like to introduce you to Uganda. If you don't know, please follow me. Uganda is a former British protectorate. Buganda, it has got 61,403 square kilometers land. And Uganda as a country or a nation is bordered to the south by the Republic of Tanzania, to the southwest by the Republic of Kenya, and to the north and the east by the Republic of Uganda. Uganda, the name Uganda also, you need to know this. Very, very, it's very important for you to understand what I'm talking about. The name Uganda is from Buganda. It came as a result that the white people who first came to Buganda, they were not able to pronounce Buganda. Even up to now, if you are watching me for the first time, you might ask, ah, this guy is crazy. No, I'm not crazy. I know what I'm talking about. Buganda as a country, our rights are being violated by the so-called the government of Uganda today. The government of Uganda was imposed on us by, by the white colonizers. The government of Uganda is not there by our will. Our will for us is to be independent from Uganda. So, Buganda, Uganda is, is from the word Buganda because the white people were not able to pronounce it B. But that is not our problem. The problem we have is that they put people who are not in our will to lead us. They are using guns and up today we are still being brutalized. But this generation... This is called a never again generation. We are going to fight. We are going to sacrifice. 
anything we have to ensure that Buganda is a free country. Buganda right now is currently under military and administrative subjugation by the government of Uganda, which governs it as the central region of Uganda. That's why I'm telling you we don't know which, in, which is a new year, we don't know which is an old year, we are just there to survive. But I cannot say to you that one day, the, the days of the thief is 100 days, and the days of the owner is one day. One day, Uganda, we shall be free. And it's very soon, Uganda, we shall be free. So the Uganda population, we are around 13 to 15 million people, which is a total number of tribes. There is a tribe like me. I'm coming from a tribe of Enchima. And there is a tribe of... Enchima means a monkey. I'm coming from a tribe of a monkey. There is a tribe of a dog. There is a tribe of a lion. There is a tribe of um, buffaloes, you know. There are many tribes. They came together and they formed the territory of Uganda. So we are a victim of the illegal dissolve of, of the Uganda Constitution of 1962 by, 19, by Milton Obote in 1967. What happened? This constitution that formed Uganda was dissolved. This constitution was removed by Milton Obote. Then you can ask me to say, uh, what is that constitution? Basically, because of the colonial powers, they forced us, not by our will, to come together with 15, 15 nations to form a country which is Uganda but within that formation that government was under the federal system of governance from 1962 basically the constitution was designed in 1960 61 there are some stuff that were discussed but Buganda declared the independence or proclaimed independence on no first of January 1960. So, by the time the colonial powers, the British, they, they forced us to discuss with the other nations to come together. That's how the 15 nations came together to make a constitution of 1962. But then, within the operating operation of the constitution of 1962 for, from 1962 to 1960, Six, those are four years. Within the operation of four years, Milton Obote and his friend Binaisa, they removed this constitution of 1962 and they put a new constitution which is was called in the form of a unitary government. Unitary government of Uganda was not voted for, was not even being researched for no nation agreed on that unitary government it was first on us as the people of uganda not only uganda but even other nations i'm not here to speak for other nations and i don't care about them because they have collaborated with the colonial monsters to brutalize the people of uganda that that which we are fighting against that the actual people the Lango people the Ankole people they have collaborated with the, the enemies of Uganda to brutalize us. And I can tell you, they are going to regret their decisions. Because this is a never again generation. We want our country, we want peace, we want democracy. We want to see that the, every person who lives in Uganda can enjoy the freedom and the peace and democracy and economic development in Uganda by the people of Uganda. So... Other nations, you have made a big mistake to collaborate with our, with our enemies to continue brutalizing us. So ladies and gentlemen, that's why we are a victim. We are a victim. We are in the illegal dissolve of the Ugandan constitution. That is the root cause. The root cause of the problems of Uganda up to today is because that constitution was dissolved. And everybody, every politician, that's why I'm telling you that politicians are calling them 
enablers of genocide. Because they are monsters, they are perpetrators of genocide, which is the, the people in power, like uh, Museven and his son Kainelugaba, plus his soldiers, so-called UPDF. Those are terrorists, those are criminals, those are perpetrators of genocide in Uganda. The people of Uganda are being killed systematically, systematically. All the policies, all the policies that are designed in the Ugandan government, which is that Chikwangara parliament, that parliament which is so fake, they are designed to brutalize, to violate the rights of the people of Uganda. Not only the people, but even our natural resources, they are being violated. But I want to tell you, this is a never again generation. We want our country. We want our freedom as a people of Uganda. So, since 1967, the Ugandan government, which has been led by Milton Obote, Amini, General Amini, Yiddi Dada, and the, right now Museven, they have engaged in continuous oppression and violations of the rights of the people of Uganda. They use torture, they use abductions, they murder our people in blood daylight, in which way they can poison, like me, an activist for the human rights for the people of Uganda. They would like me to be dead. They want me to be dead. Any Muganda, any Muganda, they want a Muganda to be dead. Just ordinary people who are living in the villages. Ordinary people not minding about politics, just living their daily lives, going to the farm, digging, uh, uh, planting seeds, harvesting. Then they come. They kill that Muganda because they want that land. So, they murder a lot of people. Last time we just came out recently from the, they, they, they carry out massacres by using pangas, machetes. They use machetes to kill our people. That is a government which is, they, they call themselves government, but they plan, they plot murder. For the people of Uganda. Right now, as I speak, so called that government, which is fake and useless, they provide limited access to education. They stopped children or pupils to go to school for two years. Which government does that? They, they are using coronavirus. As an excuse not to make people not make ch children go to school because they are saying there is coronavirus. What an excuse is that? Other governments they created the platforms to ensure that people or pupils or children they go to school via online, but our government just shut down, and yet. Uh, they are children, they are going to school, Aga Khan's, schools like Aga Khan's, they were open. What does it mean? It means that it is a systematic agenda to ensure that the people, they remain uneducated, such that they reach the age of articulating things, they cannot speak. Because I can tell you, I, I, Alex, Chigundu, Muzukuru, Wamgem, I'm not just waking up to articulate things like this is through education. And I came to know that there is a policy designed by the government of Uganda to crush the people of Uganda. You cannot articulate policies. You cannot understand how these things work out if you are not sharpened. You need to be sharpened. But Museven and his regime, so-called opposition leaders, they are designing. No person came out in public to condemn. If really they did condemn, they did not put effort because they don't care enough because they are children. You know, when you reach to the extent that 
your children they are safe and your wife they are fine they can get what they want because some politicians took their children out of Uganda to study in Kenya to study in Tanzania to study in USA to study in UK during these two years when our brothers and sisters they are busy hunting in our villages but now as I speak teenage pregnancy increase Anyway, giving birth is not a problem, but the right age. Because that mama, she needs to learn, she needs to know. But Museveni's agenda is to ensure that Uganda people are not educated. Everybody must know this. This is a systematic. They are trying to assimilate us. They are trying to ensure that we comply by force. That Uganda is the government that can take care of us. Uganda is the government that which we have to submit to by force. I don't know whether people you are getting me, but I'm trying to pray to God that these things I speak, they are being shared. They are being understood clearly. If you don't understand, because I want to ensure that these videos, they become more engaging, whereby you can ask questions where you don't feel like you understand what I'm talking about. But I'm trying to tell you, the people you are calling the government are the same people who are plotting against Buganda. Not excluding opposition, even the politicians who are in opposition, because the policies, listen to me very carefully, I'm repeating this because I said it before, but I'm repeating because I want people to understand. The policies that are designed to sabotage, to brutalize the people of Uganda. They are in parliament. But which parliamentarians come out to publicly to condemn the policies that are designed to brutalize the Uganda people? Like, for example, the land policy. The land policy. Just a mere good example. There is a Mwani policy. After seeing our Katikiro successfully implementing the project of Mwani Terimba, then the Isimaganda are going to gain momentum in terms of economic, you know, economic pocket. Now they are saying you have to be with a license to plant a mwani. You have to be with a license to harvest mwani and also to carry out business, you know, in a mwani. Now, what does it mean? It means that People are going to go away to run out or to run away from farming coffee, which is so bad because me, I went to school through a money. Now, such policies, how many politicians came out in public to condemn that? You just hear talking about different things that don't make sense, but yet the ordinary person in Uganda is suffering. The ordinary person, the ordinary Muganda, who does not care about politics, is suffering. Land. Everywhere there is land grab in Uganda, there is a gun. No, I want you to come out in public and say, Alex, you are lying. Everywhere there is land grab in Uganda, there is a, a gun. Who is having access to guns? And they are in army uniform, which is so-called uniform for UPDF. What does it mean? It means that we need to learn how to deal with these politicians. Nobody cares about Uganda except me and you. And I would ask you to collaborate with us such that we liberate our country. It is possible and we are going to do it. No, some people did it and we will do it. You know, even if they take me away, someone else will come because Uganda is ours. Uganda is ours. We can't leave it for the foreigners to run it. Never. Never. I'm talking to the generation which are responsible and I believe we are going to go forward with this. We will make it happen and it will shall see the, the, democ the, the real democracy 
in Uganda. So our population, they do not have education because of the issues of saying there is a coronavirus all over the world. Yet other countries, they are having education. They are teaching their children, those who are in, in, in control of their country. Right now, as I speak, you hear news saying that they are taking development in Congo. What does it mean? It means that Museveni and his government or the politicians, so-called politicians, opposition, they cannot develop Uganda because they know if they develop Uganda, there is that how can I put it? They can't develop it because it's not theirs. It is their source of income, their uh, milking in Uganda, taking development to Congo. Maybe they are trying to form a country in Congo. They are trying to build roads that side, such that development can boost. You know, you know very well. Um, seven went to Tanzania and built a school. How many schools did he build in Uganda? Why? They, we, we, they cannot put any economic growth opportunities in our territory. Right now, as I speak, they are using cultural assimilation. They continue to tell you, no, if you speak about Uganda, you are so so say, you, you, you don't care. No, I want to tell you that cultural assimilation is not going to work. Cultural assimilation will only work if we, the people of Uganda, we are in charge of Uganda and we take the policies uh, that are going to manage Uganda, not a foreigner. A foreigner, there, there is nothing they can talk about for the sake of Uganda. You know? How many roads have been built in Uganda? No, no roads. Go and find any road that was built in Luero, where I'm seven, was fighting against the regime of Obote, but only carrying out systematic killings. They killed a lot of Uganda, the government of Obote, which is again an illegal government. Then the illegal rebels led by Museven killing again the people of Uganda. That's why I'm telling you that we the people of Uganda, we must rise. And I believe this year 2022 is the year for the people of Uganda to rise. It's the year to produce the flesh, the flesh pride of Uganda. You must walk all over the, 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 the Uganda territory with a, a banner like this one. You must have it that I am a Muganda, a proud Muganda. Carry your flag. This is our flag. This is our flag. Carry your flag wherever you go. A fresh pride of Uganda. I want it this year in the younger generation of Uganda. Uganda people, you must come to know who you are. Don't be reminded. Come to know who you are. Come to find out why you were born in Uganda. Why you were born for Uganda. This is a, a year that which I want to see. I want people to ask what is Uganda. Where is Uganda? On the map, on the Google. They must find out through you. They must, when you, like the, last year, 2021, I was so privileged to be part of the United Nations Human Rights Council, representing Uganda as a minority, as a people fighting for self determination. This is our right. People will tell you Uganda is a tribe. No, Uganda is not a tribe. Uganda has got tribes. I am from a tribe of Enchima. Some people, they come from a tribe of a dog. Some people come from a tribe of a buffalo. Some people come from a tribe of a... Uh, a tribe. Many tribes. There are 52 tribes. What does it mean? It means that we have to be proud of who we are everywhere we go. To avoid this human rights violation. 
This government of Uganda is not gonna win. It's not gonna win. So we will continue to strive to reclaim our freedom from the colonial rule by the Republic of Uganda and we will continue again and again to resist, to reject the illegal occupation of Uganda by the Republic of Uganda. The Republic of Uganda is invading our territory of Uganda. I want you this to be clear. The government of Uganda right now is led by the people from Rwanda. They are using it as an attachment. Remember Uganda, Uganda. Even a, a, a Cameroonian can come to Uganda and claim to be a Ugandan and become a president. Even a Kenyan, even a, a Sudani can come to Uganda and claim to be a Ugandan and become a president. That's what is happening. In Uganda, they are doing all their nonsense in the territory of Uganda. They are using our assets to run the illegal government of Uganda. What does it mean? It means that any person can be Ugandan. Right now as I speak, the government of Uganda is led by Rwandans. You know, I don't want to, to speak about that nation, but that is the truth. The people of Rwanda, the Tus people, they came to, to Uganda. Our kings, our Kabakas, they accepted them. They made agreements and the, the, we, we, we decided to live with them. Around the 1920s when they are running away from genocide. But now, these people... Once they came to see that there is an opportunity, which opportunity am I talking about? They realize that there is no ownership of the country called Uganda. There is no person owning it. Everybody is running away from their responsibilities. Then those people who knows how to use a gun, they are the one who can take a power and hold on to it and lead the people. Even any person can do that. That's what we want to to move away or to run away from. Because even any person can be a Ugandan. And right now as I speak, even the birth certificate for Uganda, they don't show indigenous people. They are just showing where you are born, your names. They don't show indigenous people that I am a Uganda, I am a what? Many people, they, have, they are Ugandans as I speak. Many Rwandans. Uh, many Somalians, many Eritreans, many Sudanese, many Kenyans, they are Ugandans because the birth certificate, they change them to suit them. The agenda is to ensure that they eradicate the spirit of Uganda. But it's not going to work. Alright? So, how do we overcome that? We need to reject, to resist this illegal government by the Republic of Uganda, uh, Republic of Uganda in the territory of Uganda. We need to resist, we need to reject. You know what I'm saying? We need to reject, we need to resist this government. We need to denounce all the vices of governance and deprivation of the rights to life. You know very well me and you that the government of Uganda, their policies is systematically targeting the people of Uganda, especially the right to life. They are killing Muslims, my brothers, Muslims. Last, recently they just killed a Muslim Mufud. Sheikh Muzata. Not only that, there are many Muslims which are Uganda. Remember, this Abaganda, they have been killed. Politicians, they just go to attend the funerals as if it is no more. Yeah, as if the life goes on like that. Sheikh Muzata was killed, murdered in blood daylight. 
by the Republic of Uganda, led by the two Rwandans, who are foreigners in the territory of Uganda. So the person who is a Muganda, whether you are a Christian, whether you are a Muslim, whether you are a Musamise, you have been, your right to life it has been taken away from you. They can take your life anytime they want. They can take my life anytime they want. We cannot continue like that. The right to liberty, the right to happiness, now as I speak, we can no longer celebrate our New Year, our Christmas, our ED, like normal. Because we are being targeted everywhere we go concerning our lives in our territory of Uganda. There is no happiness. Since 1964, when they took away our two provinces, the province of Buyaga and Bugangais. By the way, those two provinces, they are still for Uganda. In our generation, we are saying we want our land, the full territory of Uganda. Quote me right, we want our land, the total restoration of our land, including Uganda and Bugangais. So we are determined that we shall live a free people, governed under the rule of law, in a sovereign Buganda that will be characterized by justice, democracy, peace, and prosperity. Buganda, we shall be free. You know? So, today, I want to also to remind you that on 1st of January, on each and every 1st of January is a public holiday in Uganda. Even though people <laughs> might not take it serious, these, thing, these things I'm talking about, they're going to be serious. Each and every 1st of January is a public holiday, is a proclamation day. It is the day of the declaration. It is the day of the Omugenzi Katikiro Maiko Chintu and his cabinet decided to declare that Uganda is free. The British tried by all means to hide it under the carpet, but we are saying this is the time to resurrect the nationalism of Uganda because we are tired of these people, the Rwandese tools. The Acholi people, the Lango people, they must go back to their territories. So it is a public holiday, and some will respect it, some will, will learn to respect it, and some will learn to appreciate the sacrifice because it was tough. It was not easy during that time because the British were scaring our cabinet, our Luchiko, but through the determination, through the courage of those guys, we can still stand today and say, Buganda is a nation. Because of those courageous men and women, who did declare that Buganda must be free, Buganda must be independent from the rest of other nations. Media tried to report him about it, only the foreign media. And I want you to make a research from the foreign media, especially the Kenyan newspapers, the Tanzanian newspapers, the London newspapers, they wrote about this declaration and these archives are there. If you don't know, after this video, go down, scroll down to my page. You are going to see I shared some people. Even on Twitter, some people they are writing about these archives. This is a true a truth for Uganda. Politicians will never talk about it because they are benefiting from the colonial setup of government. And that colonial setup of government, it has got nothing wrong if it is in the will of the people. But 
the colonial setup of government of Uganda is illegal because it was dissolved in 1967. So, they keep quiet because they are benefiting. They are benefiting from this colonial setup of government that which is illegal. So they can't talk about this declaration, this proclamation. But I want to tell you, every activist for Uganda, you must respect the sacrifice that was made by the great chief of Uganda from 1955 to 1960. Uh, from 1955 to 1965. They made a lot of sacrifice. Even though some Somehow, somewhere they lost it when the two provinces were taken away from them. And then also there will be the attack. I can tell you, they did whatever they did in their time. This is our time. Then also, I can say to my parents or my grandfathers, anyway, my parents, because my grandfathers, those are the Ruchiko, the great Ruchiko of 1955 to 1965. Then to my fathers or my parents, that is the time whereby Museveni or Bote, eh, Museveni, Amini, they are coming in. They didn't do anything for Uganda. They just kept quiet. People are invading our land. Now this is where we are. Now this generation, we are saying we are going to finish everything. We are going to complete this struggle for our freedom. We are going to finish it. Whether you like it or not, this is a generation that is going to complete everything. We want our country. We want our freedom. We want our democracy. Like the way it was. The collaborators, they are politicians and they are political parties. And you know what to do. Then, economically, if we give money to the, to the Rwandese in terms of going into their taxes, in terms of going to their shops, in terms of um, doing business with them, that means we are investing in the genocide which is perpetrated to us, which is targeting us. Anytime you are doing business to a Rwandan person in Uganda, you are investing in the genocide carried out to us. You are investing more money to ensure that more brothers and sisters which are Uganda are going to be killed. But I will, dig, I will go deeper into that. But I'm, gonna, I'm trying to highlight you to show you that we need to, to stop doing certain things to ensure that they don't lead to the other. Because the more we do invest in genocide, the more we, we try to, to think that it's normal in Uganda to be taken away, to be murdered, to be raped. And even design more policies. A time might come that you can't enjoy any right. Anyway, now the right to life already is no longer right in Uganda. But I can tell you, you see that you can move away from your house going to work. A time is going to come that you can't do that. Because you are investing in them. You are investing in the genocide. We have to fight against that. So, this is me. I want to show you a video, what I did last year, even to inspire some of you. Also, I want to collect, it is not 1st January 1961, the independence was proclaimed. It is 1st January 1960. 1st January eh? 1960. I want you to watch a video that I did with my children to ensure that we move forward with this. We show the people that Uganda is a country. I want you to be inspired. Uh, what is happening here? Okay, you know this technology is anyway. Uh, I can't see it. 
but let's leave it. But, 1st of January 1960, Uganda declared independence. Their many res uh, resistance they received from the British government, they tried to bring a lot of soldiers from Nairobi, but it did not stop them. They went ahead and declared the independence of Uganda. Even though the local media did not report about it, but they went ahead and declared the independence of Uganda. You know? So, Uganda, Uganda's generation of today, we need to start believing in ourselves. This year, it must be a year of believing again in Uganda. Believe again. You know? It is possible. You know? It is possible. It, it must bring that fresh pride of Uganda in you this year 2022. I want to see people raising their flag, the Uganda flag, while they are in the occupied, where they are in the, which is, may I call it, the foreign embassy of Uganda. Like that embassy of Uganda, that was a house for Uganda. For example, the Uganda, the Uganda house in London is supposed to be a Uganda house, that one. So I want people to go to that embassy lifting the Uganda flag on, on these special days. Like, for example, 1st of January 2023, we must go to the Uganda house celebrating or commemorate the, the Uganda Declaration of Independence. If you don't go to the embassy, why don't you gather the Uganda people, talk about their, our history, how rich our history is, you know? Gather the Uganda people and talk about it, you know? Talk about it. The fresh pride of Uganda must be that you must get rid of the Ugandan flag. Ugandan flag doesn't fall anywhere in the Uganda nationalism. Uganda, Uganda flag, in fact, is the symbol to show that you are proud to be a slavery, to, to follow your, to put yourself into slavery. Any person who is waving a Uganda flag and is a Muganda, it's like you are saying, thank you very much to kill our Kabaka. Thank you very much to kill our, to take our land. Thank you very much for all the people that died for Uganda. They are nonsense. They are, they, they are, they are worth nothing. Every time you wave the Uganda flag, you are happy and you are proud for the crimes that which the Ugandan government is committing to us as the people of Uganda. Every time in Uganda you are waving a Uganda flag, you are saying to yourself, thank you very much, the Ugandan government, to kill my brothers, to invade our land. Thank you very much. Go forward. Go forward. Because the Rwandan person, listen to me very carefully, these words I speak, you're not going to get them from politicians. And yes, yet you tend to think, to allow them to think for you. I'm going to repeat. A person can come from Rwanda, as they did. They use the Uganda flag to wave that flag in the name of Uganda and design policies to jeopardize the people of Uganda. They kill, they murder, they torture the people of Uganda, waving the same flag. So, the people of Uganda, if you continue to wave the Uganda flag, it's like you are happy about the genocide that is taking place in Uganda. We need to stop we need to put an end on the thinking that Uganda flag is normal. The Uganda flag, it must be banned. It must be banned. 
So for us to produce the fresh pride of Uganda in us, in the year of 2022, we must come together as a people of Uganda. It's all about the flag. Lift the flag. Raise the flag. Speak about the rich history of Uganda. And then, there are many people who are planted within us, within our structures, to jeopardize the Uganda nationalism. They will continue to tell you that if you speak for Uganda, you, you, if you speak for Uganda, you are msososi. You don't know what you are talking about. Please reject that. Resist that. Believe in your country, Uganda, and speak the truth. Stand for the truth. For the people of Uganda. For our Kabaka. And each and every person that is saying it that is from the administration of Mengo. Because right now, they are being targeted. You know? Speak for them. Stand for them. Stand for the truth. You know? And then I want to see the sacrifice, more sacrifice for the country of Uganda and its people. You know? The sacrifice that was made by the Katikiro Michael Chintu in 1960s. It must be activated in this year, 2022. It is possible. The oppressor will continue to oppress us, but let us continue also to increase our nationalism. You know, last year, I was very proud to represent Uganda in the United Nations Human Rights Council for Minorities. And I can tell you, you feel proud to represent who you are. You feel proud. But the more you continue to, 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 to be confused, to confuse yourself, not knowing yourself that you are a Ugandan. You are not a Ugandan. You are a Muganda. You are a Mugandan or you are a Uganda. You are not a Ugandan. Because even a Rwandan can come to Uganda and claim to be a Ugandan. Even a Sudan can come to Uganda and claim to be a Ugandan. You are a Muganda. And above all that, Buganda is a country. Buganda is a nation. Nobody can stop you to be proud of who you are. You know what I'm saying? You are a Muganda. So it is very, this year, that fresh pride must be produced in you. This year, let us see freedom of Uganda. Let us fight for our freedom. Because the truth is, Uganda decided to go alone. Our desire is to be independent of Britain and Uganda. That is it. You know? Politicians are lying. They will tell you, you know, they will tell you that, you know, peace is coming, democracy is coming. As time goes on, you see that nothing is coming. So, let us come together and fight this liberation of Uganda. It is possible. It is possible. The right to self-determination, it was done before. It can be done again. You know? It is. It can be done again. You know? So, ladies and gentlemen, I think now we understand why we must celebrate 1st of January. 1st of January is very important in our lifetime. Now, I want to talk about what we did last year and what we might do. Not everything, but in general. Last year, there are many things happened in the form of liberating Buganda, in the form of fighting the human rights abuse in Buganda. You know? I can say the great achievement that we had last year, it is that representation within the minorities group within the United Nations. That was a great achievement. And also we managed to collaborate with other nations. 
that are fighting for the right to self-determination. You know? Buganda is at the moment we need to ensure that we make Uganda a contender worldwide. We make Uganda a contender worldwide. You know, the government of Uganda and its politicians, they are trying to summarize Uganda because <clears throat> they have made the issues of Uganda a local issue, a domestic affairs. Uganda as a country, especially the issues, they cannot be treated as local or domestic. Buganda issues, they need to be treated international because, because Buganda is a nation. Buganda is a country. And when that happens, that means that we need allies. We need allies to ensure that whatever decision we take, it must be defended. Not just to be a mere people who are just speaking about things, but we are not going anywhere and no one listens. But when you make yourself a contender, you become noticeable. People start to notice you. When you become a contender, you're going to be on the table, on the higher table. And you remember when you watch me or follow me, I told you that if um seven and his politicians, they think they are smart. This is a generation that which we are not going to take nonsense. Whatever we say, we mean it. And we mean it by action. I told you that we're going to go to United Nations. Buganda is going to United Nations. And we are going. And we are already there. That means that whatever we are going to be discussing is going to be internationally being recognized. Because the, the issues of Buganda, every person will look at them when you speak about them. People think they are, those are local issues. Those are domestic affairs. No. The issues of Buganda is an international case. Is a, because it involves nations. You know, Buganda is a nation. And we have laws that govern us as the people of Buganda. And we have laws that we need to be obliged by the international. So the international law, it gives us the right to self-determination. And that right to self-determination, it cannot be treated as the local issue. You know what I'm saying? So, we are going to United Nations and we will find ourselves there. I want to tell you a joke. It's not a joke, but it's a serious thing. As we enter the United Nations Human Rights Council for Minorities, the lady who is representing the government of Uganda, we found each other there. They become surprised. They, become, they come to know why Uganda is here because... This is a never again generation. And I want to tell you that we are going above that level. We are going forward. Buganda is becoming a contender. We need to make Buganda a contender. How? Each and every Muganda, if you are in London, if you are in um, America, you need to visit your senators. You need to visit your mayors. You need to visit your councillors in your regions where you are, when you are where you are residing, and you talk about the issues of Uganda. Stop claiming to be a Ugandan, because it, no matter how much you claim to be a Ugandan, you'll never be defined by Uganda. Nobody, even people, don't know why the international community is not taking a serious. Silias, um actions against him seven and his government. People don't know why. But just to give you a tip, people don't take you serious because you have failed to take yourself serious. The people who are claiming to be Ugandan every day going to the streets, to protest against the dictator I'm saving. You are not taking yourself serious. There is a certain way you handle issues. And the way you are taking, or the way you are handling issues, that's why 
the international community is not taking you serious. Because there is issues, serious issues. That's why people are supporting Museven. Issues like Uganda to separate is a serious issue. And yet Museven is protecting that unitary government, that national unity. Just I'm giving you tip of the eyes. You know what I'm saying? You need to know, Buganda, that we want our freedom. Yet they, people whom you are visiting to talk about these issues of uh, human rights, of abuse of seven, they want that country you want. If you don't know, there are two governments in place in Uganda. In Uganda. There is a Uganda government and the central government. And once any mistake, Buganda, we must be free. And that which they seem seven as a person who can manage that situation. And yet you go, Uganda, Uganda, Museven is killing us. I'm telling you that Museven is protecting the interests of those who want Uganda to be one. But there is a way how you can treat this case differently is knowing who you are and continue to fight for Buganda. Like, Buganda case is important than the, the case of Uganda. If you are a Muganda and you are watching this video or you are going to watch this video, take it from me. Start from today knowing who you are that you are in Muganda. You must start visiting senators. You must start visiting the mayors, the councillors in your region where you are residing. Talk about the issue of Uganda. They are going to take you serious. But if you continue to say, I'm going to talk about the Ugandan government, dictators have been, in, have been existing in Uganda up to today. Even another dictator is coming until the case of Uganda is resolved. If you cannot wake up and come to that knowledge, you are wasting your time. Anyway, I'm talking to the activist for Uganda. Visit your mayors, visit your councillors, visit your senators. Talk about the Uganda issue. Nothing else. Because we are being targeted systematically in the name of Uganda. Then you are going to be taken serious. Alright. So, ladies and gentlemen. I think, um, anyway. So this year. That's what I'm saying. This year, start to do things. Be proactive. Stop talking and do something. Stop talking that our rights are being violated. Oh, it's a curse to be a Muganda. No, stop crying like a chicky chicky. Be a man. Be a woman. Stand up. Go to the right people. Don't just go to everybody. They are not going to listen to you because some people, they are happy where they are. Where Uganda is, they are happy. But go to the right people. If you don't know, consult me. I will give you the direct links. There are people waiting for you to be heard because the Uganda case is the only case that which you are going to resolve the political affairs of Uganda. If we resolve that, everything is going to be fine. But people don't want to accept it and then they keep on lying themselves thinking that they are going to, to resolve the Uganda problems by leaving Uganda aside. Never! It is not a lie. So I have seen politicians lying to us. I've seen Bopi Wine. I've seen Binaisa. Not I've seen. I, we read about Binaisa. We read about Semogerere. We read about Rule. You remember Rule? You remember Binaisa? You remember Semogerere? Now it's Bobby Wine. Okay? Those people, they are coming to distract the people of Uganda, to move away from the nationalism of Uganda, to, go, to continue thinking that Uganda, there is a solution. 
in Uganda there is hope. No. I can tell you. Politicians, if you are watching this video or you are going to watch, listen to me. You either ask for repentance, for lying to the people of Uganda, or you regret by the decisions you have made for, for collaboration and enabling of genocide to the people of Uganda. Because I'm going to tell you that Uganda as a country, we are going to liberate ourselves. We're going to be free. But any politician that has enabled, that has collaborated with the perpetrators of genocide, you will never be left unattended. Because we need our country. We want our country. No more Uganda. When you remember Bob Besige. By the way, Besige is one also there. You remember Besige went all over the entire Uganda. One Uganda, one people. One Uganda, one people. That terminology, I want you to know. These people, they work together. They sit together and they design these terminologies. To make sure that the nationalism of Uganda is dead. Basically went around the entire country singing one Uganda, one people. What is that Bobby Wine doing today? Which flag is he raising? Let me tell you, politicians, your time is over. Your time is finished. This is a time for the people of Uganda to rise up and defend and fight for our rights. You're not going to win. In fact, you are losers. You have lost it. It's not going to work and it will never work. Uganda, we must be free as a people. Uganda, we must be free as a people. So, I want to thank all the activists. I want to thank all the human rights activists for the people of Uganda who have sacrificed whatever they got in their lives to ensure that this nationalism grows, especially on social medias. Even if I'm on social media. Because these people are determined to kill, delete, and destroy our history. But all the nationalists, the nationalists, the activists who are making sure that Uganda stand, Uganda gain our freedom, it's a freedom, her freedom. Thank you very much. 2021 was a success. Without you guys, we cannot be where we are today. We are going forward. 2022 is going to produce a new, younger generation again. New, fresh ideas. They are coming until we see this freedom. We shall see this freedom. We're not going to die without seeing this freedom. Quote it from me. The generation of today who have availed themselves, they are going to see the freedom of Uganda, whereby Uganda is led by the, the indigenous Uganda. In control of the resources, in control of the borders, in control of each and everything in Uganda, not foreigners. You know? Because right now we are submitting to the foreigners. They are in a church. But they will run. Or not, God will give them into our hands. God will give our for the foreigners into our hands. Those who are making crimes against humanity in Uganda. This generation shall see freedom. This generation shall see freedom. Thank you very much. Share this video if you can. Such that more people can come across to it and get to know what is happening when it comes to the liberation of Uganda. Bye-bye.